Remember this fancy old-timey bathtub with feet that look like it was ready to run away? Or this door that can't decide if it wants to be open or closed, so it just splits the difference? Today we take a look at 10 Old Home Features That Have Faded Into History, Part 2. Clawfoot tubs are special bathtubs that have been around since the 19th century. They are known for their unique design with feet that look like claws. These tubs were originally made of cast iron and lined with porcelain. In the late 19th century, clawfoot tubs were considered a luxury item and were very popular among the wealthy. Clawfoot tubs were first designed in the Netherlands in the mid-18th century, possibly inspired by the Chinese motif of a dragon holding a precious stone. The process for making these porcelain lined tubs was invented by David Buick, who is better known for the founding of the Buick Motor Company. Dutch doors, also known as stable doors or half doors, are unique because they are split horizontally. This design allows the top half to open while the bottom half remains closed. Originating in the Netherlands in the 17th century, these doors were practical for farmhouses keeping animals out while letting light and air in. They were especially popular in Dutch areas of New York and New Jersey before the American Revolution. Made from various materials like wood, PVC, and fiberglass, Dutch doors were versatile and functional. In Ireland, these doors were also common in cottages, designed to keep poultry and pigs out while allowing fresh air and sunlight into the dark, smoky interiors. Laundry chutes were designed to make the task of doing laundry easier by providing a direct path for dirty clothes to travel from the upper floors to a laundry area, typically in the basement. The idea evolved from earlier industrial chutes used for coal and rubbish, adapted for home use to handle soiled linens. This adaptation was partly due to a growing awareness of germs and the desire to keep dirty laundry out of living spaces. In the early 20th century, Having a laundry chute in your home was a sign of wealth and sophistication, as it indicated that the family had enough clothes to last between washes. Florence Nightingale, the founder of Modern Nursing, even established guidelines for constructing chutes to maintain sterile hospital environments. A fun fact about laundry chutes is that they were sometimes used for dramatic escapes or hideouts, as in the case of asylum patients. Witch windows, also known as Vermont windows, are a unique feature in American architecture, mostly found in Vermont. These windows are placed diagonally in the gable end wall of a house, with their long edge parallel to the roof slope. This design allows for a full-sized window to fit into a narrow wall space between two roof lines. Witch windows are mostly seen in 19th century farmhouses and are less common in new buildings. The name Witch Window comes from a folk belief that witches can't fly their broomsticks through tilted windows, although this tale wasn't taken seriously. These windows are also called coffin windows, but it's unclear if they were actually used for removing coffins from upper floors, or if their placement just reminded people of coffins. In the early to mid 20th century, some homes had a unique feature called a blade bank slot usually found in bathroom walls or the back of medicine cabinets. These slots were designed for safely disposing of used razor blades. Instead of throwing the sharp blades into the trash, where they could be dangerous for children or pets, people would slide them into these slots, where they would collect in a hidden cavity in the wall. Some of these slots were simple cuts in the wall or cabinet, while others were made decorative with special blade slot tiles. This practice changed in the 1970s with the introduction of fully disposable razors by companies like Gillette and Bic, making blade banks obsolete. During renovations of historic homes, caches of rusty razor blades have been found, revealing this forgotten aspect of daily life in the past. A sleeping porch is a special part of a house, usually a deck or balcony, where people could sleep outside during warmer months. These porches were often screened or enclosed with windows to keep bugs out. They were especially popular before air conditioning and electric fans were common in homes. Sleeping porches allowed people to enjoy cooler air at night as they were away from the warm air inside the house. This idea became really popular in the early 1900s in the United States. These porches were not just for sleeping, 
They were also a place where people could relax and enjoy the fresh air during the day. Boot scrapers were essential tools in homes, especially during the 18th and 19th centuries. These devices, made of metal, were used to scrape off mud, snow, leaves, or even manure from the soles of footwear before entering a building. They came in various designs, from simple metal sheets to elaborate cast iron shapes, and were often found at the entrance of a house. Boot scrapers became popular in big cities during the times of horse-drawn carriages and dirt roads. They were sometimes integrated into the architecture of the house, either protruding from walls or built into niches. In New York City's Greenwich Village, some old houses have shoe scrapers attached to their handrails. Before everyone had cell phones, homes often had a special little space called a phone nook. These nooks were small built-in areas in the wall, usually found in hallways or living rooms, where the family's landline telephone would sit. They were designed to keep the phone in a central spot so everyone could hear it ring and easily answer calls. The phone nook often had a little shelf for a phone book or notepad and a seat so you could sit comfortably while talking. As technology advanced and cordless phones became popular, these charming nooks became less common. Many old homes still have these nooks and they're now used for decoration or storing small items. Lath and plaster were common methods used in building homes before modern materials like drywall. This process involved nailing narrow wooden strips called laths across wall studs or ceiling joists. Then wet plaster was applied over these laths, creating a smooth surface for walls and ceilings. This method was popular because it was a good way to finish interior walls and ceilings and it provided some insulation. Over time, lath and plaster were replaced by plasterboard and drywall, which were easier and quicker to install. In many historic buildings, lath and plaster ceilings play a crucial role in preventing fire spread, as they prevent the timber-joisted floors from fire damage. California coolers, also known as cooling cabinets, were a popular way to store food in the late 19th and early 20th century, especially in the western United States. These cabinets were built with slatted or screened shelves and had vents at the top and bottom. The design allowed outside air to flow through by natural convection, keeping perishable items like fruits and vegetables fresh. They were often placed in a part of the house away from the sun, usually near the kitchen. Before the widespread use of home refrigeration, California coolers were a clever solution for food storage. Many people continue to use these cabinets for additional storage, such as keeping beverages and desserts cool. If you're a fan of old home features and missed part one of this series, be sure to click on this video right here to catch up.